This video is brought to you by Sportsman Guide. Right now, you can get a free trial to Sportsman Guide Buyers Club by clicking the link below in the description. You'll get up to 10% off gear and 5% off BBs and boomsticks. So go ahead, check below, and now we will roll a video. So there is no telling how many times I've been asked the question, Hey, John, how do I get ready for the military or special operations, special forces, you name it. So here it is, the long awaited, how do you get ready for that stuff? So some of you guys who are newer to the channel, you'll be looking at me and like, who is this YouTube commando? Uh, and, uh, and you're challenging my credibility. I get that, but never fear. I've got this going on. Boom, multicam. Instant credibility. Somebody wearing multicam obviously is the real deal. So there's that. In addition, I did some uh, other stuff, uh, tabbed, double scrolled Ranger. So party on for that. Anyway, let's jump in. Uh, you need three big things to be developing when you're getting ready for the military. One is mindset. Two, getting your body ready. And three, going in with the right attitude. So let's break these down one at a time. Uh, the first one is body. Let's uh, deal with high, high levels of physical endurance. Getting really big, super strong, not a good idea. You're going to have to carry all that, uh, that weight up and down mountains. And really, the name of the game when you're going into the military and going through all those rites of passage, the, the name of the game really is endurance, endurance. You want to be able to throw 60, 70 pound ruck on your back and beat feet four miles an hour, stretching out those legs and walking all day long and being able to recover quickly. That also means your physical endurance isn't just muscles and cardio. It's also make sure that your feet are just raw calluses. They can go all day. So find a cheap pair of uh, jungle boots that are going to tear up your feet and uh, walk with those until your feet don't get torn up anymore. So physical endurance is what you're looking for. Another piece of that is make sure you find out what exactly goes into the Army PT test. Have a recruiter or somebody else who's recently gone in and done the exact same thing uh, and show them how a PT test is graded. And then you take that PT test over and over and over so you can crush it. Guys, you're not going for a passing PT score. For me, I always said the minimum standard is maxing the PT test. So when I was in Ranger Battalion, my team and my squad, they were required to have perfect score, like maxed scores uh, for the PT test. That's just personal pride right there. That's what I want you to drive for. So go in physically strong and tough. The second thing goes into the mindset thing. So there's two pieces of mindset that you got to really focus on. One, the mindset is, let's call it grit. That means absolutely, I will not quit. I will die first. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. Guys, don't literally die. Now someone's going to die and their parents are going to sue me. Don't literally die, but still, that's the mindset of I will not, will not, cannot quit. And so you have that grit that'll carry you through. So make sure you do that. Really, to be able to have that, it's not just, I will have that. No, you won't. Everyone thinks they will. Make sure you're putting yourself through your own little torturous hell beforehand. Your training should take your limits far past what you thought they were. Make sure that you're uh, subjecting yourself to a certain amount of absolute misery so that uh, when that starts happening, it's an old familiar friend. Remember, the body will usually quit far before the mind will quit. Uh, so you got to have that mindset says, hey, I will not quit. I will not quit. So that's part of it. And let's say grit. The second, it has to do with levity. Uh, levity is Hey, this, it's all a game, guys. Life, you can look at as a game as well. But specifically, all these military rites of passage, they're games. The drill sergeants or your, you know, um, DIs, wherever you are, they scream and yell. And when they're done with you, they sit down, kick their feet up, laugh. And it's a, it's a game. To them. It's a job to them. But you take it very, very seriously. That doesn't mean you shouldn't take them seriously, at least to their face. Just recognize there is a game going on. And you need a certain amount of mental elasticity and mental flexibility, right? So what typically happens is guys who are plenty physically tough and mentally tough end up tapping out because 
they can't handle the abject stupidity of it all. It's the proverbial dig a hole and fill it in. Dig a hole, fill it in. Dig a hole, fill it in. And before your body breaks, your mind will just go not oh, so stupid. Uh, and anyway, that's the stuff. That little tiny irritating uh, soul-sucking stuff is the thing that really gets you. You need that mental flexibility. Remember, hurricane force winds can come through and rip down the strongest oaks and cedars, but it's the it's the trees that can bend and flex with the high storms and winds. Those are the ones that can stand. And so a lot of making it through those initial rites of passage and even surviving well and thriving in a war so that you can go the distance is to have that mental flexibility. This uh, You can really see this in action when you see graveyard humor of a soldier. They're laughing at their own deaths and Anyway, to be able to have that flexibility, to laugh at your own misery, to laugh at your own fear, uh, don't laugh in front of the drill sergeants, uh, don't laugh in front of your immediate superiors, but you have that internal understanding that this is a game and don't take yourself too seriously or your pain and misery. It's going to be much funnier later. So go ahead and skip to the end. So those are two things. The, uh, the third thing is attitude. Resist negativity and complaining. It's fun to do at the time. It's cathartic. You feel good. It's so easy to just complain. But after you've done that, it makes you a little weaker. And those around you who maybe jumped in and complained and were negative with you, uh, will start to secretly, unbeknownst to them, they'll start to despise you and your fellowship as well. Uh, you are not a super soldier, commando, army of one, despite the old, old army commercials. You're not an army of one. You need people to like you uh, to some extent. Even if you got to your unit, if people don't like you, you will not stay there long. You're going to be a dirtbag. Even if you can physically hack it, they just don't like you. That's true in life for every job. And so we're, we're encouraging, uh, you know, helping, uh, going the extra mile kind of thing that that's, uh, part of it, uh, so that you're, you're liked. And other than that, shut up. Don't, don't, don't speak a lot. Don't law, draw a lot of attention to yourself. You want to be the gray man. You especially don't want leadership or drill instructors, uh, ranger instructors, anybody to say, ah, the hot shot or ah, the dirt bag. There's bookends to every single uh, group that passes by. There's the dirt bags and then there's the studs. And both draw a lot of attention, meaning their lives are much harder because they stood out. Don't stand out. Make sure people like you and forget you so that you can uh, pass through with flying colors. That, is, that also is just kind of part of the game. Guys, this is my advice for getting ready for the military. Don't quit. Be tough. Have a good attitude and roll with the punches. Train hard, train smart, and we'll see you next time. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in, and special thanks to Sportsman Guide, who made this video possible. Again, check below in the description for a link to their website and start saving now. Peace out, guys.